from House of Pain to a modern day passion, go behind the scenes of Tyler Perry's ambitious new Easter project. Plus, a football star who paid a price for the game. When I would turn my neck, go Find out what punted the pain. And then, a former pro wrestler meets his match on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to this edition of the 700 Club. We're so glad you're with us. It's got a tremendous program today. You don't want to miss a minute of it. The battle lines are being drawn in Washington. Guess what? The president, the chief divider, has done it again. He has put somebody forward for the Supreme Court. The Republicans say, no way. We're standing firm. We want to give the next president the chance to make the pick. And this particular man uh, apparently is against uh, uh, the interpretation of uh, the Second Amendment, which means that he might take the guns away from people who have guns. One vote, as Senator Cruz has pointed out, is all that is protecting your guns. So that's coming up, and uh, we've got some other things. Well, Democrats are applying the heat, saying that the president's choice should get his chance in the Senate. Jennifer Wishon brings us the story from the White House. This is the greatest honor of my life. Judge Merrick Garland is on Capitol Hill today, meeting one-on-one -on -one with senators. An hour after his nomination, White House officials say a handful of Republicans reached out, offering to meet with Garland. At the same time, Senate leaders held fast that they will not hold a confirmation hearing until after the election. Our nation faces really big issues. Accelerating debt, threats from terrorism, a struggling economy, major education and health care reform issues. This is a moment when the people of the United States should speak about the direction of our nation. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says Republicans are simply following the Biden rule. That is advice offered by then Senator Joe Biden in 1992. Once the political season is underway, and it is, action on a Supreme Court nomination must be put off until after the election campaign is over. That is what is fair to the nominee and essential to the process. Otherwise, it seems to me, Mr. President, we will be in deep trouble as an institution. It's a position in direct contrast with President Obama. I simply ask Republicans in the Senate to give him a fair hearing and then an up or down vote. The battle has begun. The White House plans to chip away at Republicans, securing meetings for Garland and applying pressure to potentially vulnerable senators facing election this year. It could be effective if come November, it appears the Republicans' slim majority is at risk. If a Democrat wins or if there's going to be a Democrat Senate, will the lame duck Republican Senate then vote to confirm someone who may be considered more centrist than some other nominee that could be put forward. Judge Garland is likely much more moderate than anyone Hillary Clinton would nominate. Fidelity to the Constitution and the law has been the cornerstone of my professional life. Some conservatives are also privately concerned about who Donald Trump would put forward. Senator Ted Cruz sits on the Judiciary Committee currently refusing to hold a hearing. Meanwhile, Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid predicts Republicans will cave. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, the White House. Well, if Republicans cave, they can kiss the Senate goodbye because the people who support them and vote for them want them to hold firm. This man, this one judge, uh, could vote to say that the Second Amendment is not a personal right, but it has to do with a militia. And if gun ownership deals with the militia, that means that every person in the nation who has a firearm would be at risk. And this is a major issue. But there are other things, too. But it's amazing. The president filibustered against Alito, a great uh, pick. He filibustered against him because he didn't agree with him. Now he's talking about the, the, the Republicans doing the, the right thing. 
Well, the Democrats want to do it their way. And I think this is what Biden said, and he said it right. If we're in the middle of an election, you don't put up judges until the election is over. This is a, a very important distinction, and it's one that should be followed. We need a new president, and this president is trying to uh, <laughs> they have a rule in law called Mort Main, the dead hand, and the dead hand of a lame duck president is trying to control the Supreme Court because the next man that goes on that court is on for 20, 30 years. And uh, a lot of policy can be made by those people. It only takes one more judge, one more. But um, we have been snookered so much. I remember talking to Jim Baker when he was uh, chief of staff of the White House for Reagan about another particular justice. And she said, oh, this, this lady is a person for all seasons. She's a wonderful centrist and so forth. And out she comes with all of these liberal uh, opinions. And one after another, the Supreme Court has dominated our nation. Marriage, homosexuality, uh, schools. And you go down the line of you know prayer and so forth. And, They've come out against, 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 and they've ripped up the fabric of American life. And uh, the Republicans absolutely should hold firm until the electorate decides who the next president's going to be. It absolutely is important. Well, in other news, a very important decision today from Secretary of State John Kerry on terror. The question was, do we say that this is genocide, what they're doing? John Jessup has that story. Thanks, Pat. Secretary Kerry has determined that ISIS indeed is committing genocide against Christians and other minorities in Iraq and Syria. The finding will not obligate the United States to take additional action against ISIS. In making his decision, Kerry weighed whether ISIS targeting of Christians and other ethnic minorities and religious minorities meets the definition of genocide. Several groups had pushed for the declaration, and the House of Representatives voted this week 393 to nothing to condemn ISIS atrocities as genocide. We'll have an in-depth look at the story on tomorrow's 700 Club. Well, radical Islam is also a growing threat in Europe, with more terror arrests in France and Belgium in the past days, as authorities try to contain a growing threat from violent Muslim extremists. Dale Hurd has a story. Four suspects have been arrested in the Paris region amid fears that they were planning another terrorist attack. Few details have been made available, but France's interior minister says alarmingly that French authorities now have to make arrests like these every day. Tensions are high in France following the November attacks in Paris that left 130 people dead and after a raid in Brussels Tuesday on a terrorist hideout allowed two suspects to escape. They're on the run. One suspect was killed. One suspect was neutralized by a sniper of the special forces when he tried to open fire towards the police from a window of the flat where he was hiding. The European Union's crime fighting unit says the Islamic State has set up a special operations command to launch terror attacks on soft targets in Europe using training camps on European soil. Belgium and France are now home to some of Europe's most dangerous terrorists, and police have their hands full, to say the least. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thanks, Dale. The Federal Reserve Board's announcement Wednesday that it will not raise interest rates as much as expected had quick repercussions throughout the financial markets. Stocks shot up before falling back later on. Gold jumped as well. It's been rising in recent weeks. And the price of oil has also been going up, with crude going from the mid-20s up to nearly $40 a barrel. Well, an ancient biblical scroll has found a new home at Regent University. The Torah scroll contains the first five books of the Bible. Charlene Aaron reports on the dedication of this special and rare gift. A special day of celebration surrounded the donation of this ancient Hebrew scroll to Regent University. Dr. Robertson, it's with great pleasure that we, Barbara and Ken Larson, gift this scroll to Regent University. May God bless you as you use it. This scroll was uh, copied or written in 1750 before the establishment of the United States of America, before the Constitution. and. Uh, uh, we will treasure this. It is a magnificent gift, 
And uh, we thank you for your dedication. We thank you for your commitment. The Torah scroll has survived some of the darkest periods of human history, a powerful testament to God's faithfulness and the enduring power of his word. This particular scroll that was donated to the School of Divinity at Regent University is a Yemenite scroll. It's a scroll that's roughly about 265 years old, and it comes to us from that area, Yemen, where, of course, the King of Sheba came from. And it was a time period where Jews were severely persecuted. They had to kind of run for their lives, and they brought these Torah scrolls with them. The condition of the scroll demonstrates the meticulous care and commitment to the biblical text. Members of the Jewish community attended the dedication service, calling it a bridge between the Jewish and Christian communities. We had a common goal, both to to continue the Judeo-Christian teachings, but also to support Israel and how critical it is for both of us. And so this program today really brought that together and gave it so, so much meaning that we could both share in an appreciation of the Torah, and now it's going to be here at Regent. It's just fantastic. Ken and Barbara Larson donated the scroll and have also gifted Taurus to several other institutions. They hope it will encourage students to develop a deeper appreciation for God's Word. So when you come to grips with how God brought this Torah here, our hope would be that the students would have that kind of appreciation for what he's done to keep his Word accurate, relevant, so we can all learn and grow. And I think Long after we're gone, long after you're gone, the Word of God will, will live forever. And in a Torah that's several hundred years old, will still continue to live and to speak, and many students will be able to gain from it. A goal echoed by officials at Regent. We've made the commitment that the Word of God is the foundation for absolutely everything that we do. It's at the center of our education. It's at the center of the formation of our students. And to receive this extraordinary ancient Torah scroll that students could look at and they can handle and in some, some instances could even touch, uh, enforces, solidifies this commitment that we've made to the Word of God. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. Pat, what an amazing gift. Well, it was an amazing gift, and it was an amazing ceremony, and it brought us together uh, with the Jewish community in Tidewater and with the Larsons who had arranged this, and uh, it's just a magnificent gift. 1750, uh, uh, it, it goes back a long, long time, and uh, it has a great meaning since it came from Yemen, so I mean, it, uh, it's a great thing to lay eyes on, even much well, less have really here is, at the university. It really is, and we'll have a special case made for it, mm -hmm. so that but people will be able to get and look and see what it was. Uh, but that, you know, the Torah, uh, at least the uh, the Old Testament part of it, is the foundation of our Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Then added to that, of course, were the writings of the New Testament, and together it makes up our Bible. But uh, we believe in the authority of the Word of God. And Regent University, by the way, uh, it's a great school. And uh, this is just one more token of what goes on at the school. Uh, if you're interested, by the way, and we've got a, uh, let's see, let me get here. Uh, fe flexible eight-week courses, 70 accredited programs. And we're just launching a very important program about nursing. You know, uh, they're looking for nurses with degrees. And so we have a program that's called an RN to BSN, Bachelor of Science of Nursing. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be offered next fall. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Every uh, year expanding more and more. Oh, man. Yeah. We, we just crossed 8,000 students, by the way. That's wonderful. A, that's a wonderful. New, it's a great uh, time of year to come visit the campus. Ooh, it's beautiful. beautiful All these right flowers <laughs> are out, the flowering uh, trees and the... Uh, uh, we had thousands of jonquils planted there. It's a beautiful campus, so by all means, come and visit. All right. Well, coming up, a modern-day take on a 2,000-year-old story. The passion comes to life on the streets of New Orleans. I think it's unique. I think it's really a wild and wonderful idea. My biggest prayer is that this will reach millions of people that would normally never hear the gospel. 
We take you behind the scenes of The Passion Live after this. Welcome back. You're watching the 700 Club. We're glad to have you. Tiwi TV networks have seen huge success with something different, live musicals. More than 20 million people tuned in to see the sound of music on NBC. And this Palm Sunday, the Fox Network is broadcasting a live musical based on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Ephraim Graham traveled to New Orleans to bring us this behind the scenes look at what is called The Passion Live. There is no fear now. I will love you. The final hours of Christ's journey on earth are coming to life with actor and award winning singer Giancarlos Canella taking on the lead role. How do you prepare? to play Jesus. <laughs> That's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest honors I've ever been given. It's a musical take on the 2,000-year-old story set in the streets of present-day New Orleans. We're staying true to the biblical sense of it in the scriptures. That is intact. That is not being changed. No one is writing words in Jesus' mouth. Like, that's, that's not going to happen. But just everything that surrounds it refreshes the story. And I just feel that it's going to appeal to an even bigger audience that needs to hear that story about love and about acceptance and forgiveness. And I know that I needed to hear that message when this opportunity came into my life. Country superstar Trisha Yearwood plays the mother of Jesus, and New Orleans native son Tyler Perry narrates the two-hour Fox television special which includes performances from gospel artist Yolanda Adams and American Idol alum Chris Daughtry. I am playing Judas, the bad guy, the, yeah. ultimate, the ultimate villain. But I think it's a character that, um, I think there's a bit of Judas that we can all relate to. You know, we've all made decisions that we didn't exactly think out the ramifications uh, before doing it, and we've all felt guilty for doing something. While this production is new to American television, it's become a tradition in the Netherlands. Er is te veel te there are multiple moving parts throughout the Crescent City, a stage, big screens, and people carrying a 20-foot illuminated cross from the Superdome to the banks of the Mississippi. The massive production is part of what attracted Michael W. Smith to the project, playing one of Jesus' disciples. I like adventure. I think it's unique. I think it's really wild and a wild and wonderful idea that has worked in Holland, and why would it not work here? Um, found out who the cast was and, and just thought, this. I think I could sink my teeth into this thing, so here I am. Shane Harper. It's not even atheism anymore. But known for his breakout role in God's Not Dead, also plays a disciple. Um, there are people, you know, who are going to be very familiar with this story. They grew up hearing about it in Sunday school. It's going to be people that, that haven't had that experience. Um, and I hope that uh, both of these groups of people um, will come with open hearts to this, to this performance. The play hangs on popular music, with lyrics rewritten to tell the story. I sing The Reason by Hoobastank, which for me was always a great song about love. You know, it was always one of my favorite records. And coming here to The Passion now, singing this song after Peter denies Christ three times, and now kind of seeing the song from a whole other point of view, it's definitely going to be, I think, an emotional performance. Unconditionally, I will love you. This is an emotional story of unconditional love. My biggest prayer is that, that this will reach millions of people that would normally never hear the gospel, but they would probably really, totally understand who Jesus really is. Because I think there's so many misconceptions about who he is. It's a prayer being answered on set 
even as cast members practice for the live Palm Sunday performance. When I said yes to this, I, I started becoming even, even closer uh, than I was before to the story, to the scriptures, to the book, to the Bible. And, and in doing so, I just, I, I was reminded that yes, he was such a powerful being, but he was also human. And people forget that he was human, you know? And I think we need to be reminded of, of those moments of humanity. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, New Orleans. Well, you can see the Passion Live this Sunday night at 8 Eastern and 7 Central Time on the Fox Network. You don't want to miss it. It looks like a tremendous production. Boy, it really does. It's yeah. wonderful. Marvel. Quite an undertaking. Amen. Hey, by the way, today is the day they, they give me a day. <laughs> Every year I have a day. And, and I, we didn't recognize and, and it. I, I so forgot sorry. it. I, I, I didn't wear a green tie. I know. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. I, <laughs> I was in Chicago, and I thought, isn't it wonderful? They, they even uh, the river poured green, green paint mm -hmm. or whatever, a green color into the river. <laughs> and they turned green. It's and they've done it, done it all for me, and I yeah. felt so honored. <laughs> You know, know. Anyhow, this is St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Spreads. What? Your fame spreads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's St. Patrick's Day, and, and here I'm wearing a blue tie. I'm ashamed of myself. Yeah. Well, uh, tomorrow. You tomorrow. make up for yeah, it tomorrow. Sure. <laughs> well, up next, a former football player with severe pain in his neck. It sounded like sand, you know, just shh, shh. And then after a while, it uh, started crackling and popping. So when I would turn my neck, go. Hear what put a stop to that sound and the pain after this. Stretch it out. That was Robbie Robinson's remedy for any ache or pain he felt after taking hits on the football field at West Point. But years later, the pain in his neck got so bad, it even made a grinding sound. And stretching it out brought no relief at all. I do know that uh, when I was playing football, a lot of times you would uh, run into a guy and you got your bell rung you know, or you got your neck jammed. Whether Robbie Robinson was playing high school football in Philly or later at West Point, he knew playing hurt was just part of the deal. If something is, is little, okay, the coach says, stretch it out. That was that, the mindset at that time. So I'd stretch it out and keep going, you know. Once his football days were over, there seemed to be no problem until years later when he started having stiffness in his neck. At first was a mild pain, you know, and Stretch it out, <laughs> stretch it out. So I, I kept doing that, but as time went on and on, it got more significant. I actually thought I had a heart problem because I started getting pains right through here and then sometime the numbness in this left arm. So I said, oh my goodness, you know. Finally went to a cardiologist and found out that it wasn't a heart issue at all. It was the vertebrae problem. And he recommended that I go take physical therapy because there was really nothing you could do, you know, with degenerative discs. Robbie found some relief with therapy, but by 2014, he could no longer hold his head up fully or get comfortable. It sounded like sand, you know, just shh, shh. And then after a while, it uh, started crackling and popping. So when I would turn my neck, go He prayed about it regularly trusting God for relief. I am aware and understand that God's in the blessing business. And healing is one of the main things that I think God brings to people on the planet. One morning, Robbie was watching the 700 Club and Pat Robertson was praying. He just described my position, you know, to a T. A neck injury, uh, your cervical vertebra has, has been deteriorating, and right now, if you want to touch the back of your neck, fine. God just healed you in the name of Jesus. When he gave that healing uh, prayer, sound like he was talking about me, I put my hand on my neck. It wasn't immediate, you know, but during the next week, I would move my neck every day, and I would pray every day, and as time went on, just 
gone. No problem, no crack, no pop, no nothing. I feel like people need to know, especially people who are not saved, that God is here, He loves you, and that you, you know, out of all the millions of people, the Holy Spirit will go so far as to fix the smallest thing for you. And it's just unbelievable. We want you to hear it right from those who've been touched by the power of God because it's real. We have other answers to prayer as well. Pat, this is Victoria from Bradenton, Florida. She has a teenage daughter who came down with Lyme disease. She'd been mm. an athlete and a leader in basketball. She lost all her athletic ability, became very ill. She would black out and was extremely fatigued. One day, Gloria called the 700 Club and asked for prayer for her daughter. That daughter is now completely healed of the Lyme disease. Not only is she back to playing basketball, Basketball, but she's become an encourager to younger girls who are moving That's up. Great. Isn't that great? Well, here's Good one. Word. In Wake, oh, excuse me, Vail, North Carolina, Lauren's left knee started popping in and out. Doctors couldn't find anything wrong. One day she was watching the program. You had a word. You said this. Someone has a knee that keeps popping in out of joint. It's so unexpected and painful when it happens. God is solidifying your ligaments. Lauren said, that's me. She felt a warm sensation flow into the left knee. Since then, her knee has never popped out Praise since. We want to pray for you, folks. God is so great. I'm, I'll never know it. I'm just beginning to understand the greatness of His power and love. We are such a tiny little fly speck in the midst of this vast universe. And yet the God we serve controls it all. Now, He can take care of your romance. He can take care of your family life. He can take care of your money. He can take care of your relationships, your business, your athletics. He can take care of your physical needs. There's nothing that's impossible with God. For Him, there's nothing. All you have to do is speak the Word. So we want to pray for you right now. And the Bible says if two of you would agree on earth as touching anything that they would ask. It will be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. Terry and I are going to agree. Mm -hmm. Father, I agree with my dear sister in Christ. I agree in the name of Jesus for people watching this program. Oh, God. There's somebody, I know this is extreme, but it seems like the Lord is saying there's somebody, I guess it's a business transaction, you're looking for a million dollars. And God it says, okay, it's yours. Just reach out and take it. Someone else, you have a tongue issue. It's almost like your tongue is twisted, but it causes, uh, you speak unusually because of that. God is loosing that for you right now. Just begin to move your tongue around and begin to speak, and your speech will be clear. Somebody, you got uh, terribly nauseated today. You've got something wrong with your intestine, your abdomen, your stomach. God is healing you right now. You'll feel fire in that part of your body. You have been healed, Terry. Somebody else, you've been plagued with ulcers. Um, Yes. I don't even know what this means, like duodenal ulcers, but God is healing that condition for mm. you right now. You'll not have it again, and you'll be able to eat what you wish. Lord, for those in this audience, whoever they are, I speak a word. I rebuke a spirit of infirmity that has come upon them in the name of Jesus. Touch! And may the power of God be in your life from this moment on. It's yours. Take it and rejoice. And please call us, by the way, as the Lord has touched you. We love to receive these reports. And uh, we just ask that you pick up the phone, call in, let us know what has happened to you, and uh, we want to share. So, Terry, it was good today. Mm -hmm. God is good. Amen. And no respecter of persons. So he'll Amen. do for you what he did for Robbie. Well, we love to feature testimonies of God's miracle working power on this program. And now you and your family can see a new movie about miracles that's currently playing in theaters. It's called Miracles from Heaven, starring Jennifer Garner. And you want to get out and see that because it'll bless you and also because the more we support this kind of movie, the more producers will make them. 
Well, still ahead on today's 700 Club, a former pro wrestler known as the Annihilator. A three-year-old kid threw soda at me at one of the wrestling shows, and my legs slipped and, and hyperextended my knee. So he knocked me out of wrestling pretty much, a three-year-old kid. See how he went from the wrestling ring to the crime ring. That's coming up. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Lawmakers in Georgia have passed a bill protecting the rights of faith-based groups that disagree with same-sex marriage. The Religious Freedom Bill protects churches and pastors from being forced to perform same-sex marriages. It also protects religious schools from having to hire people who don't agree with their views on issues like marriage. The newly revised bill now heads to Georgia Governor Nathan Deal. Gay activists oppose the measure. Well, if you've never seen the 1956 blockbuster movie, The Ten Commandments, on the big screen, now's your chance. The legendary film will be shown in more than 650 theaters this Sunday and then again on next Wednesday. It'll happen at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. each day. The Ten Commandments tells the story of the Exodus, Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses was played by Charlton Heston, of course, in one of the most famous performances ever seen. The Ten Commandments, still one of the highest grossing movies of all time. And you can find out more about these special showings of the Ten Commandments and always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Well, Carmine Azato knows a thing or two about making fake look real. He was the annihilator, and as such, he performed a fair share of body slams and backbreakers. Then an injury took Carmine out of the pro wrestling ring, and then he graduated to faking car accidents and perpetrating insurance fraud. I went from all the hope in the world to absolutely nothing. In that moment, I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. As a boy, Carmine Azato was obsessed with the idea of playing in the NFL. As a prep star in Brooklyn and Staten Island, he was well on his way. That is, until the last day of practice of his junior year. A kid on my team chop blocked me when the play was over. Whistle was blown, play was over, and that decision caused me to have a compound fracture, and uh, my career just ended that day. At 6'5", 325 pounds, Carmine had pinned all of his hopes on a professional football career. I didn't think about being a contractor like my dad was, didn't think about being a chef, I didn't think about anything. I just thought, like, my life is completely over. Carmine had surgery to repair the fracture, but later sank into a depression. He turned to drugs and even considered suicide. Then during a high school assembly, he was given the chance for a fresh start. The promoters, from the WWF came to our high school. One of the gentlemen that worked for the promoters came up to me and he asked me if I ever thought I'd of becoming a pro wrestler. For the next several years, Carmine studied pro wrestling, crafting a new identity for himself. Creating a second character was something I needed to do because I feel like Carmine was lost. So it was fun having this other, you know, personality. Going by the stage names The Annihilator and Blast, Carmine made his way to Europe where he became one of the top wrestlers in the continent. He was finally earning several hundred thousand dollars a year and enjoying the celebrity lifestyle that came with it. Being on the road as a wrestler, you get involved in a lot of, uh, you know, extracurricular activities and drinking is one of them and drug use. And I didn't, didn't really know where I fit. So I was following people. But the hand of misfortune would grip Carmine once again. A three-year-old kid threw soda at me at one of the wrestling shows. And at that time, I was body slamming a guy. He was going over my head, and my legs slipped, and the guy came straight down right onto my uh, knee and hyperextended my knee. So he knocked me out of wrestling, pretty much a three-year-old kid. Once again, Carmine's hopes for a career died. And with nothing to fall back on, he became depressed. I guess I found like I was lost again. I couldn't work and so because I couldn't work I couldn't make money and I couldn't pay my bills. Then later an old acquaintance convinced Carmine 
to join him in a scheme to make easy money. And he said, look, if you've never used your insurance, they're making money, the insurance companies are making money, why shouldn't you? And he came up with this idea about this doing an accident, a bogus accident, and just doing an insurance claim. Afterwards, Carmine couldn't bring himself to collect on the claims. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed that I even did it. But he had already been targeted in a massive federal sting operation. Carmine and over 60 others were arrested and charged for insurance fraud. At the moment when the FBI put cuffs on me, everything in my life changed. I knew I needed something really big to help me get out of this mess. That was the first time I really ever prayed my whole entire life. When Carmine was arraigned, he was the only one who pled guilty. Even the lawyer they gave me wanted me to plead, plead innocent, and I, would ref I refused it. I'm like, I am not doing that. And they're like, well, then you're going to go to jail. And I said, I don't care. I'm not going to lie to this judge. While awaiting sentencing, Carmine took a construction job where a coworker talked to him about Jesus and invited him to a church called The Upper Room. When he went a week later, the pastor gave his testimony. He starts sharing his testimony, and I start relating. He starts talking about all these things he used to be into and all these bad decisions he was making. And now I feel the presence of God. I'd never felt the presence before. And then he said, if you need, if your life is so out of control and you feel lost and you feel like you're broken, he said, come now. Man, I jumped out of the seat and I'm like, I will never walk away from you. I'm, this isn't temporary. I don't care if I have to go to jail. I just wanted what he had. I said, I'll live every day and I'll be more passionate for you than any football, any wrestling. Two months later, Carmine was standing before the judge to receive his sentence. She says, uh, Mr. Rosado, you ready for your sentence? And I'm like, yeah. And she says, well, I have something to say first. She goes, that day you pled guilty, I knew that you had a conscience. And she said, and for your sentence, I'm just going to give you two years probation. And I believe that's a picture of God. God just knows. You don't have to tell him all the things. He knows your heart. And I feel like she saw my heart that day. Carmine and his wife, singer Jennifer Rosato, have a ministry near Indianapolis. He shares his story in his book, Wounded Healers. Today, he knows the real Carmine does not have to hide under a football helmet or behind a wrestling mask. I'm very identity driven because that's where I failed in my life. My identity today is just someone who will give his life like Christ gave his life. Um, someone who's passionate. I feel like I can never be as passionate for God as he is for me but I'm gonna try every single day. He's an example for all of us, Azato. Amazing. Lawyers said, look, plead innocent. You, you, they're not can't get you on this. No, I did it. Don't be silly, Carmine. I did it. You're going to jail if you say that. Well, that's the way it is. So the judge heard it and somehow the judge of all the earth heard down. You know, God is looking for honesty in our hearts. We're dealing with the season so much, so many lies, so much falsehood that is being purveyed as truth. And God Almighty is truth. My word is truth. God is truth. And he wants truth in the inmost being. That's the most important thing he wants in you, is that, that you'd be honest. And if you're honest with yourself and honest with him, good things start to happen. And he that covers his sin won't get forgiven, but those that confess will find mercy. Carmine did it. I want to pray for you, wherever you are. Father, for those in this audience who are trying to cover up something and lie about it, I pray that they might understand the blazing truth that you have. 
that you would open their hearts to speak truth to their fellow man and truth to you because you are truth. And may we see that manifested in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Wherever you are, if we can help you, go to the phones and call in. Somebody's here who loves you, cares about you. So easy. 1-800-759-0700. Here's Terry. Well, still ahead, we're going to bring it on with your email questions. Stacy says, Anytime I have read this story or seen any movie telling of the death of Jesus, Mary is always mentioned, but never Joseph. Does the Bible tell where Joseph was during the crucifixion? Stay tuned for Pat's answer. All that's coming up. Missy Rankin got sick. Her life was reduced to a world of pain. She even had to quit her job. Today, Missy is much better, and she's back at work. And she credits the 700 Club for helping her. Take a look. In 2012, Missy Rankin began struggling with joint pain and fatigue. There were times where I would come in from work and just go to bed. It had gotten so bad that by the time doctors figured out the problem was with her thyroid, she had already quit her job with an insurance company. At home resting and taking medication, Missy often watched the 700 Club for encouragement. They were friends, they were family, we were talking, they were praying for me, but God was also saying, don't dwell on how long it's taken. Look at me, look at me, keep your eyes on me. Missy admits that it was easier said than done. I totally forgot about giving and tithing because now I'm focusing on healing until it was like God brought it back around. I'm feeling better, I'm on my medicine. I think it was about in May that uh, I felt really, really, really led to give specifically to the 700 Club. By then, Missy had been out of work for two years, but she stepped out in faith and pledged $20 a month. I stopped what I was doing and I went and signed up online to do the automatic draft. But I would like to say probably the first time that came out of my bank, you know, my checking account, that I received a call from my old boss asking me, do I want to come back to work? And so I, you know, on the phone, I'm like, sure, I would love to, and I handled it professionally. And then when I hung up, I just started jumping up and down, screaming, you know, praising the Lord, because I knew it was God. I knew it was that act of obedience, of giving to the 700 Club. Today, Missy and her husband, Terry, still support CBN and know the importance of obedient giving. It's the catalyst. It's the diving board, it's the jumping off part. And when we know that we know that we know that he's asked us to do something, it's the doing that releases the blessing, the benefit, the breakthrough, the whatever we've been praying for. You know, as followers of Jesus, we don't give because we have to. We give because we love him so much and we're so grateful for all that he's done for us. And then when we do give, he uses us to touch the lives of others. That's what happens with every single person who becomes a member of the 700 Club. And so today we want to invite you to do that. If you haven't joined with the thousands of us who are out to touch the world with the love of Jesus Christ and the truth of who he is, one of his attributes being healer, then we invite you to do it today. Our number is toll free. It's 1-800-759-0700. It's exactly what Missy said. It's $20 a month. That's 65 cents a day. That makes you a general 700 club member. We want to welcome you to the family of ministries going out from this place to the whole world on a daily basis. When you do join the 700 club, one of the things we want to do is send you heaven. This is Pat's latest DVD, what God has prepared for those who love him. You are going to be blessed by this. It's our gift to you when you say, I want to step out and make a difference in the world. This is from Andrew, who lives in Menominee, Michigan, who's already seen this. He says, your heaven DVD brought me peace. It helped me to be myself more. I was too caught up in the fear of death. It helped me to trust in God's power, not my own reasoning. Mm -hmm. You know, that often happens, doesn't it? When yeah, you lose someone yeah. in your life and you become fearful sure, of sure. death. And yeah. so... Uh, we want you to have this. So join mm. the 700 Club today. You really can make a difference in the world. Time for some email. You All ready? right, let's go for it. Okay. Okay, let's bring it on with Stacy. first of all, this morning. She says, 
Any time I have read the story or seen any movie telling of the death of Jesus, Mary is always mentioned, but never Joseph. Does the Bible tell where Joseph was during the crucifixion? I would think he would have been there. Is there any record of his death before? And if so, what does it say? We really don't know. You'd think that uh, uh, somehow he may have passed on. I think he, he was a good deal older than Mary, and uh, it may be that that he had died at that point. We, we don't have any record that I'm aware of. But he surely would have been there. Oh, been I, alive, I think he definitely course. would have, yeah. absolutely. So there's, that's the presumed response, yeah. I think. Okay, Pat, this is Kathy who says, Matthew 19, 24 says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. What does this mean? All right, the, the, the needle was a, an arch in uh, Jerusalem uh, that was rather no, low, and a camel couldn't fit. Was it a doorway? Yes, like a doorway. It, it's in the wall. It's a, uh -huh. it's a place in the wall, and it's called the needle, and a camel couldn't go through it. So it's easier for the camel to do that for a rich man because he's got as much uh, baggage as a camel's hump, yeah. and uh, it's he's got so much concern about his money and his possessions that he can't go through. That's what it means. But again, it's talking about the heart of a man, not so much whether you have money or not, well, right? Well, it's, it's talking about where your heart mm -hmm. is. You're exactly yeah. right. But the, the average rich man is pretty much absorbed with his money. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay, this is a viewer who says, I recognize that the Bible describes God as loving and a God of all comfort. I see how he continues to forgive the Israelites and the saints. But a cloud of condemnation has been over me. I know God's character and that he's never surprised, but my conscience has me wondering what his attitude toward me is when I sin against him alone. Please help. Well, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, you haven't told me. Is there something ongoing sin? Uh, uh, are you uh, engaged in pornography? Are you doing something that you're ashamed of? Are you stealing? I don't know. But what you're saying is, I'm breaking God's laws on an ongoing basis, and I want somebody to tell me uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And the somebody is not going to tell you because it's not okay. Uh, what he needs, you need to do is to stop whatever it is that you're, you're guilty of. And um, when you do that, you're going to feel a release. Uh, but get before the Lord, and He will forgive you. But let me tell you, He is a God who forgives. Thank the Lord he forgives, all right? Okay, this is Joseph who says, when I pray, I usually pray silently. Do I need to pray out loud for God to hear me? Uh, no, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, this is Aaliyah who says, whatever. there are some people who want to serve God, but find it hard to do so. They feel like something is holding them back. Is there something these people must let go of in order to get closer to God? Uh, Stories told about a Teutonic chieftain who got baptized, and he says, "Well, I, I don't want to get baptized uh, with my uh, the hand that holds my battle axe, because mm. I still want to use the battle axe." So he went under the water with his hand outside. Oh, wow. yeah. uh, we want to hold something back. That's the way. That's our na nature, and uh, the Lord wants everything. So it's just that simple. Yeah, you need all to right. let it all go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is Denise who's asking a question about Jonathan Kahn's book, The Shemitah. He says the book's pointing to a great shaking, which could possibly mean an economic disaster. Would you suggest we close out bank accounts or just simply have money on hand? If we should just have money on hand, how much and for how long? What would you do? Um, I think um rule of thumb is usually it has been six months of uh, mm -hmm. your uh, expenses that you, if you had a reserve fund. Um, uh, cash may work. Gold coins may work. I, I don't know what's going to work. Uh, but I, I tell you, folks, we can't go through life worried about some crash. I mean, the, their economic cycles is going to be a crash. I think Jonathan Kahn is right on. I think the way God's going to judge the earth is going to by, by uh, going after the money. And I think this 19 trillion and 20 trillion and 22 trillion and all the money that we're piling up in debt is going to come collapsing on us one of these days. And I think that's something that uh, we need to be aware of. 
Uh, so to have a reserve fund, banks could close and you wouldn't be able to get your money. The ATMs may not work. And so if you, imagine if you didn't have any money and you didn't have enough food, it'd be difficult. And that's, that's what it amounts to. Well, we leave you with today's Power Minute from Psalm 37, where the psalmist says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Well, tomorrow, a man supernaturally survives a massive hemorrhage. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.